Hi everybody, and welcome to Travelling with Russell, and welcome to the centre of Moscow, and welcome to Chistipudi metro station, and the park that surrounds the station. And I thought we'd go check out some trams today, and perhaps a few historical vehicles, and just have a look at what's going on in the centre of Moscow. Before we walk down towards the trams, and see some of the historical vehicles, I thought I'd point out a few things that the local government do here on events like this where they put on very big events and a lot of people will attend. Now this actually here is a field kitchen. It looks very military style, which it definitely is. And what they do is they actually have free food for everybody. Now being that it's a very hot day today, there isn't really a line for the food like there is normally. However, you can get free grechka and bread and tea, like you see this lady grabbing right here. And this is completely complimentary from the government. Now I'm just wondering, as I'm showing you these things, is it something that you would see where you live? And have a look at that right there. And you can get yourself some bread and some tea. And this is complimentary, thanks to the local administration. Now there isn't a very big line, usually if you come to an event the people are queuing down the street for this because it's so hot. Probably everybody's not really after a cooked meal here on a sunny day in Moscow. So I am right in the centre of Moscow. Chistibudi metro station is very well known and it's a nice easy place to get off the train if you want to walk around the centre. And lots of people are actually sitting here enjoying their snacks and perhaps a cool drink as well. Hot tea isn't really ideal on a day like today. However, what's just interesting is what the government do on days like this when they put on big events and they expect rather large crowds to turn up. Beautiful park right here by the station. They put all these flowers in seasonally. You can see the Matro map and lots of people just relaxing and enjoying this beautiful afternoon. The very famous entrance to the metro station right here. And this is actually the red line, which is actually the same one that I catch. So it's super convenient for me to come here at the same time. What's super interesting is literally across the road, there is a Kuzni Itochka, or what used to be McDonald's. However, people prefer to line up and get some very traditional Russian food and literally just enjoy it right here on the pavement. There's actually three of these stations set up and it's very traditional that if you come to these kind of events that you come and get yourself something to eat and drink and it's not just, you know, let me call older people who are doing this. There is people of all ages who completely enjoy Gorechka and some tea and bread. You can see everybody here just hanging out and eating their snack. And then we're actually gonna see a couple more of these stations set up just up here where they've got other things for free. We've not even seen a tram yet. I've come into the shade here under this tent and they've actually got a coffee machine as well. So if you didn't want tea and gorechka, you can get yourself a cappuccino or a latte. And again, this is all complimentary. Just because we've all decided to come to this free event and this public event right here in the center of Moscow. And lots of people are definitely attending. I knew this ahead of time before I even got here. And the other thing that they've got free, and of course being that it's summer, is they've got free ice cream. Now the only bad news about the ice cream line is it's very long. So if you want to brave about a 10 minute line for free ice cream, you definitely can. And everybody, everybody is lining up. And this gentleman here is serving chocolate dipped ice cream, complimentary. I decided to get here right about lunchtime. So this is actually the entry and exit from the station on the other side. 
and lots of people would have come a little bit earlier than me and definitely a lot of people here there's actually a second line for ice cream on this side and again this is all part of the events that they do throughout Russia of course we are in Moscow I understand that but they would do free ice cream in different cities if they had events like this oh there's even a white dip chocolate one as well there is also a concert going on and different singers on stage right here and I know how much YouTube doesn't like music playing but I'll do my best to make sure it stays in the video there's also some street artists right here and everyone can get photos with them so the other thing too is they've closed off the main road here and streets for obvious reasons. So lots of bike bicyclists and just people coming for a walk. And walk around. Not that many people watching the lady singing. But it's very loud, so you can actually really hear it from quite a lot of places. I'm hoping that the music isn't too loud throughout the whole video. Always when they have events like this, they've got concerts, they've got different performers that completely enjoy singing and being part of these events. It just makes it awkward to make videos sometimes when it's so loud. Today I'm actually alone here at the expo or the event and I think perhaps I'll meet a lot of subscribers and they know far more than me about trams. And this first model is quite interesting because it doesn't carry passengers and it's one of the maintenance trams and it's notified that by the red and white stripes on the side and there's also these blue containers or bladders inside that carry water and then if you come down here they've actually got water jets that actually squirt water onto the tracks to then keep the track clear of dirt and dust and allow the trams to basically have free passage on the line. I'm not too sure how much it has to clean in the center of Moscow because generally the streets are absolutely impeccable. But I imagine, especially in summertime like now, there's a lot of dust in the air, a lot of pollen and different things. So that's the reason that first one is sitting right there behind me. So we'll try to talk about something that I know about each of these different trams as I see them. This one right here is another maintenance tram. It's actually got a turntable and a crane so it can actually lift up the uh, tracks to when they need to replace them or repair them. And of course all the kids want to climb on them as well. But this would actually be used to literally bring the tracks into the center of Moscow and into other cities where trams are and bring the tracks literally right to the location to replace them, repair them. Now they actually even allow you to go and sit in the cab and all the people here want to get on inside and have a look closely and take a photograph and just experience what it would be like to be a Moscow tram driver no matter which type of vehicle you're in. There's definitely a lot of people here and there's so much interest in trams in Russia and just the nostalgia of seeing the old trams as well and the kids again climbing on them and wanting to get inside. And this one right here is pretty cool because it's got this very big brush at the front where it can actually clear the snow from the tracks. And it's almost like a snow plow if you like, but with this very big brush. Check that out. And of course, more photographs, but that's cool though. Inside the cab of all the different trams, there's also employees who talk about some of the features and functions and everybody wants to get in there and wants to press buttons and click switches. Of course, no problems at all on a day like today. Just have to be a little bit patient with the amount of people here. And there's, of course, a lot of other bloggers here and people taking photos and making videos, which is super interesting. There's so much 
fascination. I'm going to say it a few times just because of the amount of people that come to an event like this. I mean, obviously, on a beautiful day, you could be down by the river, you could be at one of the parks. Everybody's come to see trams and get photos with trams. Not too sure what this one does, but it looks pretty cool. Maybe there's some kind of equipment inside, but everybody wants to hang on for side and basically feel like they're riding a tram through the center of Moscow. They do actually have the signs in the windows of all the different trams with a brief explanation about what they do and when they were in operation and even which tram depot they were part of. And this particular one was actually used to check the lines and check the connection of the electricity on the trams. And you can see this big metal loop here and this big raisable platform that they would use to then make sure that there's a constant uh, electricity running through the tram lines. I think this video might be a little bit long, so if you are watching this, perhaps get yourself a cup of tea and relax. We might even see if we can walk through this particular one if we can. Hopefully we can get up the steps and get on board. Let's go. We can actually have a look a little bit closer. This is actually one of the more modern trams. Actually, I did go and do a tour of some of these trams last year and I was learned a few things about them. You can see here the air conditioning or the heating ducts underneath the seats. So in winter time, you could be nice and warm. This one's actually one of the connecting trams as well. How cool is this? How long is this? It's basically got three sections to it. This is pretty neat. And actually some nice comfy chairs as well. Of course, I've not been overly technical with my explanation of these different trams. But one thing that's definitely noticeable is the heating here. Now I was gonna say air conditioning because I'm so used to Australia in the summers, but of course obviously in winter here, getting down to minus 20 or more, you definitely need these heating ducts to be running through the trams. It's really neat to look at this one too. It's very modern looking with this circular windows at the front also. Just how long it is too, the amount of people that could actually fit on that. Now the one thing where we actually are here is this is actually an active tram route. And this is one of the stations just down from the metro where we started out. So if there was trams running, this would be the station, or at least one of the stops where you could get on and off the trams. And of course, Today they've all been cancelled for the day. And then perhaps later on, once they all leave, they'll start running again. Another one of the trams right here. And each one of them, as the years progressed, got a little bit more advanced and a few more features were added to them. And a little bit comfier chairs, a little bit wider, a little bit more comfortable. Lots of people just want to sit in them and basically remember how it was in the past compared to what the new modern trams are like now. And so many people taking photos and videos. Super interesting. See, this has got really nice panoramic windows. I wonder if this was a feature of this tram, how wide these windows were. One thing that I really like about these types of events is just the enthusiasm of everybody and how young some of the people are that are coming to look at this. And obviously some older people as well that probably rode these trams at some point. And the amount of people that just have a real genuine interest for transport here in Russia and the tram and train network. It's just super interesting to see the amount of people that just enjoy seeing these things. I really do have a question for everybody and especially people maybe who aren't in Russia. Would 
you come to an event like this? Would you bring your kids to something like that? Would your kids be even interested to see these trams and trains? You know, it's really interesting to see young kids who probably never saw these running to climb on them and get in them and then, you know, get up close with them. And then the amount of people who are literally just uh, sitting inside them, just reminiscing of times gone by and knowing that this was the tram that they rode where they live. This one's pretty interesting. I think this might be unique because it's got the middle doors. And I know every tram that's here has got some extra feature over another one. And particularly as they get more modern, they basically introduce new features. All right, that was the whole thing. So many families here as well today. And of course, with them closing off the streets, it's much easier to walk around for events like this. Beautiful park that runs down the middle of Chistipudi Station as well. Actually a nice place to come walking no matter what day of the week it is. It doesn't have to be just a tram event like this. Now some of the trams also have the original routes that they were running marked on them as well. And even some of the stations. So most of these actually are now considered museum trams. And they're part of the museum network in Moscow. So they're basically stored away. That You can actually go and see them at the museum but of course to come and see them on the streets it's just so much better and cooler i think than to go see them stored away in buildings really do hope you're finding this video interesting and i know a lot of people have watched my other tram and train videos here on the channel and a lot of people enjoy watching these videos so please let me know in the comments if this is something that you're watching my channel for when I come and make them. It's very interesting just the amount of people that come to these events. I mean, especially the fact this is all day from morning till evening. So there'd definitely be more than a few hundred thousand people that would come here today. And beautiful sunny day. Clouds are going in and out now a little bit, but it's still super nice to be out in the center of Moscow. This particular tram in front of us here was actually produced and built in Czechoslovakia and made for use in Russia and in particular in Moscow. And this dates back to 1961. Now, of course, it's a museum tram and it's been remodeled and restored. And so interesting from Czechoslovakia. Now, I think most people know it as Czech Republic of course but beautiful looking tram i think there's definitely something beautiful about seeing them up close and being able to touch them and get as close as this on a day like today have a look at those polished windscreen wipers on the front how nice are they what i will do is i'll walk down the street pretty much as far as all the trams run and have a look through a few of them and at least have a look at a few of them on display how nice is this the gentleman brought the lady flowers and he brought her to a tram exhibition as a date so nice let me know everybody would you do that would you bring your date to see some trams there's more models there is a bit of a theme to the different colors of them as well. There is that kind of red and cream or red and white color, which is quite consistent with the colors of the Moscow uh, tram and train network now. See how far down the road they go all the way to the end. Of course, I don't want to get any of the information that I say wrong. So if I'm saying anything or not quoting anything correct, please let me know in the comments. But this particular tram has one of the ticket validating machines. So you could actually get, you'd put the money in the top and then the ticket would come out right here. How cool is that? I think this might be one of the first trams that had that as well. And then have a look at all these kids wondering what the heck it is. 
because they have no idea and it takes their dad to explain it. Because the kids now were using electronic cards with microchips on them and these were never around when they were younger. This tram's also interesting for the seating as well because it's got the two seats on one side and then the single seats on the other side. So I wonder if there's any meaning to that. Perhaps someone can let me know why they did that. Because it's very interesting. Of course, there's a nice wide walkway for everybody. But why they've got the double seats and then the single seats. There is actually quite a lot of people in old uniforms as well. And I think either they perhaps worked on the railways or they may still do, but then on days like today they'll wear the historical costumes or historical uniforms. And then, of course, everybody wants to get a photograph of the lady like this in front of the tram and wearing the classic uniform, perhaps of the period of this tram. How nice is that? If you remember a little bit earlier, where I walked through the three carriage tram and it had the concertina middle section. This particular one actually is two different trams with the attachment right in the middle or the coupling right here. <laughs> As everyone wants to get a photo coming in and out of the doors. So there's basically two different ones that are attached together. Lots of people recognizing me from YouTube which is super nice. How nice is this? I really want to try and get a nice photo as well at the front of one of the trams. I think it'll be appropriate for the thumbnail. Lots of people want to take photos as well. So we're all being super nice, kind of getting outside of everybody's way as we're all taking different pictures. There's obviously something unique about all of these different trams. I was thinking there's only about 10 or 12 trams, but maybe there's close to 20 of them here, I think, walking down the street. I feel like this road's not going to end. I don't come to this part of Moscow too often. I probably should more, because the park and the pond in the middle of the uh, area right here. It's a bit hard to see over the fence, but there's this very beautiful pond and small lake. Everybody very curious with this tram as well. I think just the fact that people don't see these very often, they only bring them out generally once per year for public viewing like this, beyond being in the museums and in the different tram depots where they store them. There's a lot of fascination to come and see them up close and climb in them and press some buttons. I'm not sure how old this particular tram is, but have a look at how nice the woodwork is on the sides. They've also got light bulbs up on the ceiling there and these very classical wooden benches. This perhaps is one of the older trams that are here and just so beautiful this woodwork and the finish inside and of course to match the beautiful tram beautiful ladies taking photographs but this woodwork and finish is really nice compared to some of the others that are just so much more modern does everybody have a favorite tram that they've seen so far this tram also you can actually sit pretty much right where the driver does as well and press the buttons and turn the handles and everybody's basically cramming to get in there to get a photograph and check out some of the gauges and just get as close as possible to these trams so it's really nice to actually walk inside the trams <laughs> but they're so hot they're really not designed for Russian summers. They're really better suited to Russian winters with the heating systems. But just walking through them, it, it's just roasting. And today it's around about 27 degrees here in Moscow. So 
just feels that little bit warmer with the humidity and all the people that are crowded inside the trams. If you're wondering if some of the trams are a little bit old, then definitely this might be one of the oldest. I'm sure they get older and I'm completely getting thrown off. Now I'm gonna cheat a little bit and we'll have a look at the sign right here, which tells us it dates back from 1907. 1907. Wow. And this is actually one of the two carriage trams as well, where they've got the coupling in the between. And just interesting. The kids want to climb in the front and then the lady right here wants to get in there and get as close as possible. And just lots of people wanting to get photos and as close as they can to the tram. And who would have thought just a few years ago, these guys weren't taking selfies like this. But I guess it's just the modern times that we live in. Okay, I think I found the oldest tram here, dating back to 1872. And this is the Conker. Now, maybe I'm saying it wrong or describing it wrong. But there's this really interesting guy here who's super excited to talk about this particular tram. Now, if you can't see any cables on the top of the roof, it's because there's actually seats up there. You can actually sit on the second level. And basically, in 1872, they didn't necessarily have power to pull this around. And this was actually pulled around by horses. And this is actually the coupling where the horses would attach to and actually would then pull this tram around to Moscow. And that's just, you know, mind blowing to think that that was a thing back before the 1900s, before all of the technology came along. And I imagine if you paid a discount, you actually had to sit on the top level for a lower price ticket and you had to sit on the up. So imagine if it was snowing, how cold would it be sitting up there in minus 20 degrees? versus being able to sit inside. Wow. If you're wondering where I've been walking around for the last hour or so making the video, this is Chistipudi or Christi Pond. And it's a very beautiful place to come walking. And actually even in winter, this freezes over and they do ice skating here, which is quite interesting. And no matter what time of year you come, beautiful place to walk. There's actually a restaurant out in the middle right there that you can sit out on and just a super nice place to come. One thing I really do want to point out as well, and I probably haven't mentioned it as I've walked around, is the amount of ladies that are here and the amount of people that are just interested in transport in general in Russia and particularly today of course about the trams and how much people are fascinated by some of these older models of trams. Of course you can ride the modern ones and the brand new ones literally on this exact route. It's just super fascinating how many ladies have come out to this event. There is men here as well. I think we're all secretly train geeks or transport geeks, but just very interesting the mix of people that come to an event like this and of course want to learn about them or take photos by them or just see a little bit of history here in the center of Moscow. I can only imagine how nice the view is from some of these balcony windows looking down to the pond in front of us and back in the day which was only a few years ago these bikes were a big deal in Russia and here in Moscow and now with scooters taking over people just don't ride them anymore but simply everybody else is just going for a walk around the pond and just enjoying the day and this is a very normal thing to do in Moscow just come to a certain metro station, 
and just come for a walk in that district and just enjoy the view and enjoy the streets yeah. take in some of the architecture and just have a look at all the things that you miss and especially if you come here on the weekend as well where it might be a little bit quieter in the center of moscow and on the day like today too where they close the streets it's just really nice you can just walk around and they've actually got one of the current models or at least one of the newer models of trams i think this might be one of the trams that runs on this route and of course while ever it's closed off the driver can't go anywhere you can see how advanced they've become now they've got even the certain entries for prams the electronic doors digital screens air conditioning heating they've come a long way since that original tram that we saw there that was horse drawn and then of course now they're all electrically operated but just this one just sitting around the corner out the way just waiting for the line to open back up again and all of the staff enjoying some much needed air conditioning inside so if you wonder what a lot of people from moscow do on a weekend of course come to look at the trams but also come to the ponds and different parts of the moscow river and just relax and get as close to nature as possible without perhaps going for a swim and sit here by the edge of the pond and of course a little bit cooler weather as well getting the breeze off the water and literally that's what everybody does here on a weekend in Moscow try to get out somewhere from where they live and discover another part of Moscow that you probably haven't seen before and just enjoy the day there's actually a gentleman fishing here I really wonder if there's actually any fish in here or not maybe he'll just buy a couple at the shop on the way home and pretend that he caught something to impress his other half but just have a look at the view though you can see the trams on the other side and these beautiful old buildings as well and if you're young enough and daring enough you could actually get in the pond <laughs> this is actually a water fountain right here in the middle of the park and have a little bit of a paddle no worries at all all the parents enjoying the shade <laughs> and the kids literally just jumping in with not a worry in their minds the other event that they've got set up here in the park is an event called summer in the park and at this particular location they've actually got antiques and some flea market items and then it stretches the whole way down the middle of the boulevard here probably hard to see how far it goes along and the idea is they've got things in different price points so you can actually buy things by different prices there's lots of Christmas ornaments there and then it's different objects some tea sets and statues and there is probably about 50 booths by the time you walk the whole length of the way here and each one's got different objects and different items and different interesting things to look at and this is actually an event that's across all of Moscow at the moment this summer in the park and it's claimed to be the largest summer festival in the world now that's generally based on how many events they've got now being that Moscow is the greenest city in the world as well it's pretty easy to have events like this in 30 or 40 locations across Moscow and Moscow region so it's quite easy to have 
the largest event in the world of any particular category. There's just lots of people very fascinated by old items and things that date back from the Soviet Union or from USSR times. And this whole middle part here, it's got the different stalls. Of course, all the trams are on the left-hand side, which is where we walked down a little bit earlier. And still lots of people taking that in. And then it's nice to get here in the shade a little and see something a little bit different. Perhaps not as any bloggers here and people, you know, wanting to get photographs up close. It's still very interesting. So these different stalls have got things by different prices. So you don't have to spend the whole time asking, how much is this? How much is that? And there's different types of collectibles. So I think here they've actually got some postcards and envelopes. And there's some coins. There's also some cutlery. There's even some money. Have a look, a suitcase full of money right there. We could quickly run off with this suitcase of money and buy ourselves something in the Rolex shop. Check out all that money. I hope it's worth something. Maybe not. If it's just left out like that. And I think it's very interesting, these different events that they host here in Moscow, especially things that are, you know, that you, you probably in other parts of the world, they wouldn't have these sorts of events, I don't think. I know in Australia, they don't host nearly as many things as I can come to see here in Moscow. You know, it's just beautiful weather. There's really not much of an excuse to not get out to a park somewhere in Moscow and have a look at whatever they've got on display or whatever event they've got hosting. Now I think this one over here, I did actually read about this. This has got stuff dedicated to the Olympics in Moscow. And this was the main character of the 1980 Olympics, the bear, it was called Misha, the bear and have a look at all the items that are all Misha Bear related. I think this gentleman's just setting stuff up, but super interesting if you're a fan of Olympic memorabilia. There is also a car exhibition as well and some of the different models of cars. Now, I'm not going to try to know which models of cars I'm looking at. I know that either Gigoli or Lada or Moscovich pretty much makes up most of the ones that are here. Have a look at the hood of this one right here. Check that out. Rolls Royce, eat your heart out. Some very nice cars and one here even with the hood up and I'm really not too sure of what models we're looking at it's definitely pretty interesting just to come and have a look at them close and just admire them for what they are they've all got license plates on them so they're all definitely drivable cars and I imagine these are all privately owned cars that get invited to these events, especially when they put them on in the center of Moscow like this. And yeah, super interesting. Always when I'm walking through with the camera on, there's a bit of a crowd. <laughs> when the camera's off, there's nobody around me. Have a look at the shine on this one. Beautiful. Wow. And lots of people, of course, wanting photos with them. And it's just a matter of just being patient as you walk around and not get in everybody's way. If perhaps you recognize any of these models of cars, please let me know in the comments. 
It's actually a gentleman just relaxing in the back there in this one. I'm sure some of these are very well-known models of Russian vehicles. Now, unfortunately, this is the only car that I do recognize right here, the very famous Moscovich 3. And I've actually been to the factory here in Moscow of this car and I've seen this being made on the production line. So if you actually want to see a video of me at the factory, there'll be a link coming up for you to check that out. This is the Moscovich 3. And then right here is the Moscovich 6, which is the more newer model or more family car looking model. But super interesting. <laughs> An entire row of cars. And I recognize just one model right in front of me. But that's okay. I find it super interesting <laughs> looking at what is the modern Russian car, the Moscovich three and the six right here and then as you swing around you then see all of the classic and older Moscovich vehicles and then of course all the people coming to look at them and take photos with them and perhaps remember them from times gone by and just how yeah, beautiful an example of a certain model it is. You know, really. Just how distinctly coloured they are too. There's always that big complaint about a lot of the new models of cars in Russia are all white. And when you come to see the models here at this display, they're just such vivid colours. And so, oh, so nice to see them all and just not, you know, uh, a scrap of rust on them or anything out of place. They're all just stunning. Even a painting in the window of this one, a couple of models of it as well. Wow. And all the people just admiring the cars and perhaps remembering them when they were young. And this is on a main street in the center of Moscow. And for them to close down the whole road network within about two kilometers of this is such a big deal for them to do that. Have a look, this smaller car here. They even have a couple of the models of cars from Ukraine. This is the Zaporozhichia. I think I'm gonna say that wrong in pronunciation. You very rarely see these on the road in Moscow. Mostly you'll see them rusted out somewhere in a parking lot. But to see absolutely immaculate examples of them here on the street is incredibly rare. Wow. They're such cute little cars there. Kind of remind you a bit of a Mini or a bit of a Fiat kind of look to them. But made in Ukraine or what would have been USSR at the time. As I get further down the street, the concert music starts to start up again. And it's just so loud. They just love to just put the volume up one notch too high and in the shadow of what was Starbucks. We come to one of the cars that I also recognize. This is one of the Zeal cars. And they did actually have the factory also in Moscow. You know, most of that region where the factories were is now new apartments and homes. This is one of the cars that they used as an escort vehicle for the Moscow government. And it has that definite presidential look to it. I think perhaps maybe used by the mayor or some of the government officials from the mayor's office or from the state Duma. Also it looks a little bit like one of the cars out of the movies at the same time. And then check this out right here. This is where they would put the flag of the country right on the front as well. So how cool is that? 
So as we come to the end of the video, I really hope you've enjoyed this walk around of the parade of trams. We also saw some classic cars. And right back at the beginning, pretty much where I'm standing now, the lines are endless for ice cream. I was thinking I might be able to get myself an ice cream, but the line is just too long. And <laughs> there's no line for the hot food and the tea and the uh, bread. <laughs> But for the ice creams, people are just queuing down the street. No worries at all. I can go to the local shop and grab one. But <laughs> thanks to the Moscow administration for hosting this event and putting on all the things like they do. Now, even if they did an event in my town, it would really be no different. They would still have these free setups as well, just on a little bit of a smaller scale. The music's getting a little bit softer now. If you like the video give it a thumbs up i did meet a lot of subscribers today so if you're watching hello maybe 25 different people recognize me from my youtube channel so thank you so much for saying hello and being so polite and just being being nice and i think it pays back in spades when you're nice in return and you're willing to have a chat with somebody now, I'm trying to just avoid the traffic a little bit here and jump out the way. This is where the roads are now reopened again, so I'm gonna see if I can get across the road nice and quickly here. <laughs> Post a comment, let me know what you think of this event. Would you like to see more transport related stuff on the channel? If you wanna follow me on Telegram, the link will be on this side. You can click that link. I post lots of things about what I'm doing during the day. And if you want to see an older video on the channel, click this link. You can keep traveling with Russell. Thanks, everybody. I'm off on another adventure. Bye.